Hey, before we get into this video, I want to try something new here. I want to do a comment question of the day. So it's kind of uh, where I'm just going to ask you guys a question and you guys go on the comments and, and give me an answer. It's a way to create some, some interaction and who knows, maybe in future videos, I will feature uh, one of my favorite comments, uh, you know, for that question uh, in the next video. So uh, that, that's something that uh, might be pretty neat. So the comment question of the day is, how badly do you want to switch pro? So today I have a bit of a double-edged sword for you guys when it comes to Metroid Prime 4, a game that was announced for Switch back in 2017. But we obviously know earlier this year they basically scrapped and started over again, or at least that was what was announced to us. Some of us presumed that maybe Retro Studios have been working on it as soon as mid to late 2018. Uh, there was a different studio heading it up, uh, rumored to be Bandai Namco. We never really got confirmation on that. And that the, the game was originally split up between all these different development companies, and then uh, Nintendo didn't like what was happening, and so they... Retro Studios pitched to them, and Nintendo accepted the pitch, and they scrapped and restarted the game from scratch. Now, we obviously are doing a lot of guesswork in terms of the timeline for Metro Prime 4 and when Retro Studios began development on it, but now we have uh, a new hire by Retro Studios, which is actually really good news, and this is where I talk about how this is actually an excellent hire for the game, and it's someone who's a veteran in, this, in, in the industry uh, who is going to really help the design choices uh, inside Metroid Prime. But uh, it also, because of who they're hiring and who this person is and what they're doing at the, at, at, uh, you know, for Retro Studios, it also lets us know that Metroid Prime 4 is a long ways away and uh, kind of might fluff some of the rumors that have been floating around all year that some people at Retro Studios found out they were making Metroid Prime 4 at the same time the public did. Uh, that's pretty interesting. So, uh, who did Retro Studios hire? Well, they hired Kyle Hefley. He is um, a veteran Halo creator uh, who was their lead uh, character artist. So, uh, he would do the Master Chief designs, um, a whole bunch of different modeling uh, for, for a whole bunch of things in Halo, basically. He's also worked on Call of Duty Black Ops uh, and Sleeping Dogs. He's worked on about 20 titles uh, in his nine years at Microsoft and 343 Studios. Um, Halo 4, Halo 5, Halo Infinite, um, you know, Halo 5's Master Chief, all that stuff. He's worked on a whole bunch of stuff. Obviously, Halo Infinite's not even out yet. So his designs are everywhere and a lot of people have looked at his designs over the years and uh really said that it really had like a more metroid kind of feel to his designs and uh that obviously would make him an excellent fit for metroid prime 4 uh so that's probably why he was hired and nobody really knew obviously that he was even looking for new work but uh whatever he left microsoft and 343 studios and all that to to join retro studios i must have i uh, got a pretty decent offer from nintendo to do that now uh what's interesting about this as you're seeing some of his work on screen so you have an idea of his style of designs although obviously that was created for halo his style could be slightly different for metroid prime we have no idea what what, what he's kind of looking at for metroid designs uh what's interesting is that the basically since it was publicly announced that retro studios was making metroid prime 4 their job Bob's page was updated on the official Retro Studios website, and uh, even to this day, they're still advertising for things like an art director or an environment designer and more. And these are really basic level uh, employees that are needed to get a game off the ground. And this is why uh, this person being hired, you know, this this Kyle Hefley being hired as an art director for the game, uh, is very interesting uh for the progress of metroid prime 4 and it definitely makes it feel like metroid prime 4 is an extremely early development i mean we're, we're, we're talking likely not even seeing a teaser trailer in 2020 kind of early development we're talking might not even release on nintendo switch type of early development uh we're looking you know at least based on a, a typical triple a uh advancement level of three to four years of development you know we're looking 2022 potentially at the earliest maybe 2023 could be a cross-gen game with switch and whatever the next system is kind of like breath of the wild was or uh who knows maybe they'll get it done in two years and, and get it out but I, I highly doubt that when they're still hiring like an art director uh this uh you know early or i guess late in the game again it was announced in 2017 uh it lets you know that 
yeah, they probably didn't start work on Metroid Prime 4 seriously until this year, and maybe not even at the time it was announced Retro Studios was doing it. They might not have even gone into full development until after that announcement. So uh, this obviously begs the question, what the hell has Retro Studios been working on uh, f you know, for all these years since Tropical Freeze, basically? And uh, we, we know they helped out a little bit with the Tropical Freeze port on the Switch, but it's one of those things where... Uh, we're always left wondering. And th there was that rumored uh, Star Fox racing game or something that maybe they were working on. Uh, and apparently, even before that, another game that, that Retro Studios was working on, they got canned, or if not canned, at least uh, shelved because it wasn't coming together as well as they hoped. And uh, obviously, we know Retro Studios is the one that did make Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3. Uh, all three games considered to be pretty excellent, no matter which way you want to rank them. Uh, they're widely considered some of the best Metroid games in the series, the original Metroid Prime uh, being the best-selling uh, Metroid game of all time. So that's something to take into consideration as well, and why Nintendo would, wouldn't want to even make a Metroid Prime 4 after all these years, because, hey, it's the best-selling Metroid's ever been, has been as the Prime series. Um, so... Uh, some people have commented, you know, about whether Retro Studios should even do Metroid Prime because uh, a lot of people have left uh, the, you know, Retro Studios over the years. Uh, but uh, according to VideoGamesChronicle.com, who did the reporting on the hire, uh, they did some research on it and found out that around half of the full-time developers who worked on Metroid Prime Three are actually still at Retro Studios. So they did lose half the team, which is a pretty a pretty big loss, but it's also been a long time. So they still have half the team that actually made those games so great, uh, obviously needing some more art directors and, and a bunch of other things, you know, on their jobs page. So uh, it, it's pretty interesting that uh, they, had, they had about 50 people, I guess, working on Metro Prime 3 back, on, uh, back during the Wii days, uh, and about 27, so a little over half, I guess, remain, you know, at the company, which is located in Texas. So... Um, they, uh, had four contractors at the time, I guess they were working on Metroid Prime that they made permanent employees as well. So, um, five of Metroid Prime 3's 11 designers were actually still at Retro, so they had 11 designers on Metroid Prime 3, five of them are still there, uh, and they're likely working on Metroid Prime 4. Again, we haven't really seen anything out of Retro Studios since Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, so it would make a lot of sense if they pretty much have their full team working on this right now. I mean, they might have a stray employee here or there. Uh, working on whatever project they were working on before they took this on, but um, I, I think that's uh, that, that, that's pretty reasonable that we're going to see the Metro Prime team beefed to 50 plus uh, more, you know, because now, now they're doing games in HD, and I think what, the one thing Nintendo has learned in making games in HD, uh, you know, the past handful of years, is that they need bigger teams. Uh, if they want to get these games done uh, within a, even a typical three- to four-year window for a AAA game, they need bigger teams. So uh, it's not surprising that Retro Studios has been really hiring people all year. Uh, but, again, we haven't talked about a lot of those hires because this is the one hire that actually gives us a hint at how early in development Metro Prime is because you have an art director usually there day one. Uh, and the fact that they're hiring one right now, now granted, of industry, an industry veteran that is well-suited for the job, lets you know it's going to be a while. So it's kind of a double-edged sword in that, hey, look, you know what? This guy's really damn good at his job. Look at his designs. They are something that uh, are impressive and definitely warrant uh, him being hired by Retro Studios. But it's also, hey, look, they're hiring art director now. Uh, the game's very early in development so uh we'll have to see what happens with metroid prime 4 over time i know it's a bit of sad news to consider that it might not be switch exclusive or even on switch at all but uh i don't know I i'm honestly okay with this news i i'm someone that believes that i would rather wait you know years and years and years and get a great game uh then get a game coming out that just isn't ready for prime time you know we saw this with assassin's creed and some of the call of duty games over the years where they rush out a new thing every year we've seen it now i mean wwe that that series has from but by 2k has just tanked it went from a, a high quality wrestling game to i mean it's it's complete garbage now and you shouldn't even spend a dollar on that game let alone 60 uh and we, we don't want to see metroid get deteriorated in this way and i I know the last time we really got a Metroid game was that was kind of a spin-off title uh, that was linked to the Prime series. So I I fully believe that uh, it's going to be worth the wait and that Metroid Prime 4 is going to be absolutely incredible. But it is, you know, another one of those games where we're just not likely seeing 
um, anything else. You know, the last taste of Metroid uh, we got as as a mainline game, I think, was Other M back on the Wii. So that that, that kind of left a sour taste in some people's mouths. I think that game is a little underrated. Personally, I really enjoyed it. I think the cutscenes are. are are where people have people have a lot of issues. I, don't, I I haven't seen a lot of people actually complain about the gameplay in that game, but the cutscenes I got to admit they're pretty bad. Uh, the voice acting is pretty bad. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be, but it's still pretty bad. Um, but uh, sans those cutscenes, I think the game itself, the core gameplay is is fine. So I'm I'm excited to see what happens with Metro Prime 4. Going back to a first person perspective, like the rest of the Prime series, and I'm excited by this hire. Kyle Hefley is a, a industry veteran that is is going to breathe some life into Metroid Prime uh, as, as its first true HD entry. I'm I'm excited, and uh, I'm hoping that this does lead to that. Uh, you guys remember there was a rumored Metroid Prime trilogy HD collection thing uh, that's supposedly been done since you know ready to launch in 2018, but they delayed it because Metroid Prime 4 has been delayed. I'm very curious on if that trilogy will ever come out on uh, on Switch. We know it's it's been released, you know, back on Wii as a collection, but uh, we didn't see it on Wii U. And also, if Metro Prime 4 doesn't ever launch on Switch, that would be two straight console generations without a brand new Metroid game, which is is pretty interesting uh, for that series, considering how popular. Well, I won't really say popular. Metroid Metroid's never really been a super popular series, if we're honest with ourselves. You know, before the Prime series came along, the best-selling game was over a couple million. Uh, it was interesting they kept making Metroid games despite the fact they weren't like big sellers. And it's not like Kirby, where like they put out a Kirby game every year, it sells like a million or two, and then they're happy with that because Kirby doesn't cost much money to develop. Uh, these Prime games, especially, you know, they, they take high budgets. It's made in the West. It, you know, it's not a bunch of employees, you know, that Nintendo always keeps. A lot of them are contract employees and all that stuff. So I, I'm i honestly excited to see what happens with Metroid Prime 4. I actually want to know what you guys think about Metroid Prime 4 as well. Are you excited that Retro Studios is back at the helm? Are you excited about this hire? Are you disappointed it's going to be a long wait? Or do you think, like me, you know what? Great games are worth the wait no matter what platform they end up on. Um, I'm a bit platform agnostic when it comes to great games. Um, I obviously want all the great games to be on my preferred to play platform, like a Switch or a PC, but obviously that's not always the case. I care more that the game itself ends up being all that it can be, more so than caring exactly which platform or which, um, you know, system on a pc whether it's like origin or whatever that you need to buy your game through i care less about that and i care more about the high qualityness of the game lots of great games hopefully coming this year luigi's mansion 3 here in a couple days on halloween that should be fantastic obviously uh we have the the new star wars game coming out that looks promising anyways there's also that lego star wars game the luke skywalker saga that's looking fantastic as well uh psychonauts 2 next year and a whole bunch of stuff like I, i'm pretty excited for the direction that gaming is going in, sans the microtransactions and, and, and some of the practices going on with some companies. <laughs> EA. Um, it's really not even EA. 2K is doing it. A lot of companies are doing it now. Uh, but, yeah, I'm excited uh, for this game. And I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning into this video. Uh, for those wondering why I haven't been on camera lately, I have been sick, actually. I've been sick for... Uh, a couple weeks. You guys don't hear it in the editing because I, I caught all my all my hacking up my lungs and all that. But it's just a cold. It's been lingering lingering for a, a little bit now, uh, and I just don't feel like I look well enough on camera. Uh, I look a little pale and all that, and I, I don't want the comment section to be all about how sick I am. So, uh, hopefully, you've been enjoying this game, this gameplay and, and still images and stuff. Voiceover. I, I guess looking back on my channel, I used to do a lot of these. Uh, really, back in 2017. Uh, so I don't know. I, I don't know the viewership's affected one way or the other, whether I'm on camera or not, but I, I do enjoy being on camera, but, uh, we'll get back to that when I'm feeling a little better. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. Like this video, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one.